Welcome to Fear Free Childbirth Podcast with Alexia Leachman, the weekly nine-month podcast to help parents-to-be look forward to their fear-free childbirth. Alexia is a pregnancy and head trash clearance coach and the author of Fear Free Childbirth, How to Have a Stress-Free Pregnancy and a Positive Pain-Free Birth. As a mum who's had two fear-free and pain-free births, Alexia wants to share with you how she overcame her pregnancy and childbirth fears so that you can look forward to having a fear-free birth too. Over the nine-month life of this podcast, Alexia will be sharing some real-life stories from mums and dads, insights into the latest childbirth research, inspiring tales from birth professionals, and some tips and techniques for clearing your fears and stresses. If you would like to receive a free chapter from her book, then head over to fearfreechildbirth.com, where you can also sign up for her email series, How to Have a Stress-Free Pregnancy. But now, it's time for the show. Hello and welcome back to the Fear Free Childbirth podcast. This is your host, Alexa Leachman, and thank you so much for joining me today. Now, on today's podcast, I'm going to talk about how you can have a childbirth without fear and how, when you do have a childbirth without fear, that it's more likely to be pain free. Oh, now doesn't that sound like a really juicy topic? And I'm sure there's going to be some people listening to this going, there's no way that childbirth can be pain free. What are you talking about? You're talking utter rubbish. Well, no, I'm not. It is possible. And it's very much linked to fear. So I really want to sort of delve into that a lot more because it's really worth understanding the role that fear does play when it comes to pain in the context of childbirth. Now, for those of you that may know me already from the Head Trash Show podcast, then what I'm going to talk about today might be a little bit familiar to you. For those of you that don't know me from that, that have just joined me on the Fear Free Childbirth podcast, then the Head Trash Show podcast is all about helping to free you from negative thoughts, feelings and emotions. And obviously fear is one of those. And if we've got too much fear in our life, then we really need to banish it. And so that's where I I would have talked about it on the Head Trash Show podcast. But anyway, back to the Fear Free Childbirth podcast. So talking about childbirth without fear. So what exactly is that about? Well, let me just sort of go back a bit. Like when I first found out that I was pregnant for the first time, Obviously, I was delighted, but I was also completely and utterly terrified because, well, it wasn't the idea of like having a child that was scaring me, although that's probably quite scary for many. It was the giving birth bit, you know, the bit that there's this thing going inside of you, it's getting bigger by the day and at some point it's going to need to come out that bit. Whereas I was in a real panic about that. And anyone that listened to me at the time, because I was sort of pretty vocal about it, I was like, yep, no, I want all the drugs in the world because I just need to cope with the pain. And that was pretty much my position. And so I was sort of sharing this view with somebody when I was on a course. In fact, one of the advanced courses where I was learning the technique that I share with you guys here that's become the head trash clearance method. And so I was telling this person about, you know, my views on on birth. And she just sort of casually mentioned that she'd had a pain-free birth, you know, with no drugs. And I was like, what? Like, how is that possible? Nobody told me that it was possible to have a pain-free birth without the drugs. Like, what is she pulling my leg? So I was really kind of intrigued by what she was saying. And not only that, I mean, she didn't just stop there sort of blowing my mind. She carried on. She said that basically, if you have a child, if you have a a fear-free birth, a pain-free birth with no drugs, then the children who are born, and we say they're born naturally, which means no medical intervention, then they're more likely to sleep better and sleep through the night sooner. They're going to cry less. They'll breastfeed more easily. And they'll generally be a lot calmer. And I was thinking well, hang on a minute, why isn't everybody doing this then? Surely that's what we all want when we have kids. We want kids that sleep. We want them not to cry. I was like, this this definitely convinced me to find out more about it. But the, the, the avoidance of pain was obviously the main driving factor because I am such a wuss when it comes to pain. I really, really am. So this began my own journey of really discovering and finding out more about these natural pain-free births like how on earth can one have one of these you know can you just buy them online what what do you have to do so I went through discovering how you went about it and she told me that she used a hypnobirthing method and that's very well known and so it uses hypnotherapy to enable you to have a positive birth experience so I was devouring this stuff like you know like it was going out of fashion so I really really 
like dived right into this subject and really tried to grasp it as much as I could. And, and what was interesting for me was because I was learning about this technique, the reflective repatterning that I that I talk about a lot on this podcast. Then this was a technique that helps you to clear your fears. So I was like, well, hang on a minute. You know, maybe I could use this stuff on clearing all my fears because I was really terrified of birth. You know, it's really just horrific. I couldn't think about it without crying. I couldn't read any articles about childbirth. I couldn't read my pregnancy books, especially when it was talking about the birth canal. I was really freaking out at that point. I really couldn't cope with it. And incredibly, during in my first birth, I went from this, this place of utter fear, which there's a term for people that are fearful of pregnancy and childbirth and they're called tocophobic. So tocophobia is the fear of labour and childbirth. And some women have it so bad that they might, if they're pregnant, they might sort of hit their bump, sort of almost trying to kill the baby, you know, because they literally cannot face giving birth. Or they might avoid becoming pregnant altogether and avoid becoming a mum purely because of the fear, even though they might deep down really want to be a mother. So it's a really terrible fear to have. And I don't think I had it to that level, but certainly I was in a real panic state with my fear. And I managed to get myself to a place for my first birth that was just amazing. I had a natural birth at home in less than six hours and there's no way. And I didn't have any drugs at all. And the midwife, I don't think, I'm not sure how well she meant this, but she called me an Amazonian woman of nature during my birth. And I'm, I'm trying to take that as a compliment. I really am. So, um, this is the journey that I went to, you know, I went from being completely terrified to being able to face a a, a drug-free birth and and absolutely managing to do it and not having the pain. So I'm sitting here telling you that, not telling you, I don't like using that word, but sharing that it is possible and there is hope for those of you that are terrified of birth and that really want to avoid the pain. And believe me, the bonus of having children that sleep through the night and don't cry. I mean, I've been very fortunate I've had that too. So this stuff really does work. So let me just share with you, how is it possible then to give birth and not experience the pain? What is it? What's the secret? Well, the secret is this, it's fear. Better still, actually, a childbirth without fear is a childbirth without pain. It's the fear that causes the pain. And it's understandable when we think about it, because if you think about it, whenever you've learnt about births or seen births, let's say on the TV or in the movies, and it always looks like a completely dramatic affair. There's lots of shouting, screaming, there's doctors everywhere, there's midwives everywhere, there's machines beeping. It's just all a bit dramatic. And there's a woman that clearly looks like she's in pain. There's midwives screaming, push, push, push. You know, there's big needles of epidurals. I mean, it's it's all really, really full on. And, and that's what we grow up learning. You know, I remember at school, I was shown the video that basically the best sort of sex education contraception that every teenage girl sees and that's a a video of a childbirth and that sort of puts you off sex for life pretty much because you're so terrified of the outcome and I think I'm I'm affirming my fear definitely in the zone of schools they've got a lot to answer for here but essentially when we grow up thinking that childbirth is such a painful experience we then naturally become incredibly scared of it and this fear triggers this whole cascade of responses in the body that actually contributes to the pain and so if we can start you know changing that initial fearful response then this is really where it all begins and so the problem is we've got to stop seeing this stuff we've got to stop looking at these horrible examples of births and stop listening to these experiences that are all around us you know women are only too happy to share their horrific birth stories and and almost sort of, hey, well, my labour was worse than yours. And we, we just don't need to hear that kind of stuff. It's important for these women to share that because they need to, that it's, that's clearly been difficult for them to go through. They need to get through that and move through it and talk about it. But equally, it doesn't help those that haven't yet had a child because it starts instilling the fear in them. And so I think it's important that we allow those positive birth experiences to come out as well and for people to share those so that other women can benefit from that, you know, because it's really not, doesn't have to be that way. So the other thing really to think about is essentially when you think about birthing and, you know, the procreation of the human race and other species of animals that walk this planet, how many of the species can you think of that scream in agony when they give birth? None. You know, cats, dogs, horses, cows, giraffes, whatever. You know, if you look at any David Attenborough programme of nature, 
and there'll be animals giving birth they're not looking like they're in agony they just kind of get on with it they just the little ones plop out and it's all very calm and it's very beautiful just as birth is you know it doesn't have to be this hugely dramatic experience and so you know this is this is really such a shame for us it's particularly the women that are, that are facing this and so really let me get back to why the fear creates the pain so in the context of childbirth and labor there's a a known cycle that's called the fear tension pain cycle and if you're interested in then just stick that into google and you'll find a whole heap of you know posts articles science research books all the rest of it on the fear tension pain cycle but essentially it goes like this when somebody is in fear their state of mind will trigger the stress response within the body. And the stress response means that your body goes into the fight or flight mode. And when your body's in that state, it gets flooded with adrenaline. And that will help you to either run away really fast so or to fight. So your body's going to tense up. All the blood leaves your main organs in the torso area and goes to your extremities, your arms and your legs. And that's to help you to run or to fight. And this is all about survival. This is all about ensuring that you survive because, you know, you've all heard it. The fight or flight response comes from when we were sort of threatened with saber toothed tigers back in the day, except we don't have those kind of threats now. The stress that we have in our current lives is unlikely to be life threatening. And so, but this is, this is where it comes from. This is where this response in the body comes from. So let's just imagine for a minute that you're in a birthing environment, you're giving birth and suddenly this fear comes into your body, this stress. Then what happens in that moment is you've got adrenaline coming in, your uterus, which is your main muscle that's helping to make all this happen, that's helping to bring the baby out stops because it's lost all the blood that's gone to your extremities the adrenaline has just bolded in and basically it it triggered this lack of the, the blood going to your extremities and so your muscle that was doing all this work now stops because nature's thinking hang on this isn't safe you know this isn't for us to survive as a species this is not a great time to be giving birth so let's just stop this labor thing let's just put it on hold and get somewhere safe before we can carry on and so that's why labor pretty much stops at that point it pretty much goes on hold until the woman is able to clear the fear and stress out of her system because once the fear is gone once the stress is gone adrenaline will leave now the reason that the other thing about adrenaline that's really interesting is it's a bit of a bullying hormone it's you know it's a bit like a bull in a china shop to be fair and it scares away the two main hormones that you need on the day when you're giving birth and that's endorphins and oxytocin now endorphins is natural nature's best painkiller i mean man has never been able to recreate a painkiller like it and this is what's on your side when you're giving birth you know your body is flooded with endorphins when things are going really well and your body's also flooded with oxytocin and oxytocin is the love hormone it's the one that's present where you know when you made the baby and it's the one that keeps labor moving so the minute adrenaline comes in those two just scoot they're just not going to hang around at all they're going to disappear and all you're left with is adrenaline just causing this chaos in your system and so that's why labor slows down and if you sort of go against what nature's trying to do by carrying on to push you're going against nature and obviously that is going to hurt so all this balance is that that was really working really well having the hormones that you need present and no adrenaline just gets completely disrupted the minute fear and stress steps into the picture And it's only when you manage to get those out of the way that you can restore levels of oxytocin and endorphins that mean you can have that pain-free experience, that you can have that fast labour where it all keeps moving nice and quickly. And so that's sort of where this fear, tension, pain cycle starts. You know, the fear really is responsible for kicking off this this process, these sort of sequence of events in the body that is really not helpful, particularly in the context of childbirth. So it's really easy to see that when you go back to, well, what fears and stresses are we talking about here? Well, the obvious one is the fear of pain. And so you can see very quickly that this fear of pain is almost creating itself because without that fear of pain, if the fear wasn't there, then maybe the pain wouldn't be there. But let's, you know, let's be honest, there's probably some other fears flying around at the same time too. I mean, some of the fears that I had were included things like, you know, losing my dignity. I mean, hello, legs akimbo, all sorts of bodily fluids flying everywhere. It's understandable that women are like, oh my goodness, my other half is going to see me like that. You know, this is a fear. It's very valid. There's, you know, things might go wrong. Things, you know, you might die. I mean, there's all sorts of things that people worry about. And these are very real for those people. So 
the important thing is, is to clear those fears because the thing is the body doesn't distinguish between a real life-threatening fear and one that is just in your head. And so it's important to get rid of the ones in your head because you need to have the benefit of nature on your side. So how do you do that? Well, it's very simple, really. You just brainstorm all of your fears. You just write them all down. So whatever it is, so fear of pain, fear of making a mess on the floor, fear of losing your dignity, fear of your man seeing you look like that, fear of it going wrong, whatever it is, just Write it all down, literally any little tiny thing, until you've got a really nice list so that you can literally treat it like a to-do list. So once you've got your list of fears, the next thing you need to do is get hold of the head trash clearance method. And this is a free five-step method that you can get from my other website, the head trash website, which is headtrash.co.uk and on the home page there you can grab this free five-step process just sign up for your email and you'll get it straight away and there's it's really worth you signing up for the emails because the emails that come once you receive the download include a load of really useful stuff to help you to use this process so that you know that you're doing it right there's videos in there there's some tips on how to use it to make sure I mean it's a really simple process but people like to complicate stuff so it's really just to reassure you that you really are doing it right so that's all you need to do you take your list of fears and then you do this five-step process and to give you an idea if you're not familiar with my work on the head trash show or my head trash work then this process is really really super super simple and the great thing is is it clears fears from your mind and your body and that is why this is so great to use during pregnancy and for childbirth because whatever you do you do not want those fears to be residing anywhere in your body you want it to be completely free so that you can be completely present and in the moment when you're giving birth and when it comes to clearing these fears it basically takes about 15 to 20 minutes to clear a fear that on average, some might take a lot less, some might take a little bit longer, but that's basically what you're looking to do. And so once you've got your list, you've just got to work through them. You know, it does take time and it does take effort, but it really is worth it. You know, the idea of being able to have a fear-free birth, that's really compelling. That's really something that I wish more women could enjoy. But it is also possible to have a pain-free birth because the fears create the pain. And so if you can be completely fear-free and completely in the moment, completely trust your body that your body can do this, there is absolutely no reason that you cannot have a pain-free childbirth experience. But it takes effort, it takes preparation, it takes time. You can't just swan in on the day and expect to get that. So this is, but it's simple. It really is simple. Write down your fears, clear them one by one, bish, bash, bosh, you're done. That's it. If you have any questions about any of this stuff I've talked today on the podcast, then you know where to find me. You can email me at alexia at fearfreechildbirth.com Um, You can also find me on the uh, Head Trash stuff. I've got a Facebook page. I've got Twitter on Head Trash as well. So you can find me in that way as well. And if you have any questions, just please get in touch. I really want to help you to do whatever it takes to have that fear-free childbirth experience. So I'm here to help. So seriously, send me an email. I get back. I reply to every person that sends me an email because I really want to help you. If there's anything else, then you know where I am. Otherwise, uh, next time I'll be back here on the Fear Free Childbirth podcast. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in. You've just been listening to Alexia Leachman from the Fear Free Childbirth podcast. If you enjoyed the show, she'd really love it if you left a review on iTunes or Stitcher or shared it with a friend. And don't forget, to get a free chapter from her book, head over to fearfreechildbirth.com to get your copy, as well as finding other episodes in this podcast and more about how Alexia can help you with pregnancy and birth preparation coaching. Until next time.